Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder guide. I want to focus on how to upgrade and enchant your weapons to the max. The main reason is in my build guides when I cover the gear progression I often get questions on how my weapons have so many powerful properties added at once. For example by default the Grave Singer Battle Wax, one of the most OP weapons in the game, is only a plus 2 with its usual increased critical threat chance. On the other hand, if you take a look at mine, we also have Nullifying Living Bane, Weapon of Death, Evil Outsider, Bane Flaming, Frost Shock, Axiomatic, Bane again, Cold Iron, Good Align, and then Extra Enhancement. The reason for this is simple, spells and some class abilities. And I want to cover them all, starting first with spells, because they are the most generic ones. Any character will have access to, so long as you have a Divine and Arcane Spellcaster in your party, which you always should. Now, it's important to note that, sadly, you cannot permanently add any property, although some are extremely long-lasting. Unlike, let's say, in Everwinter Nights 1 and 2, other very fun CRPGs, you can't really permanently enchant your weapons. But anyways, let's get started with the spells. The first and most important one is Magic Weapon. Well, actually, it's Upgrade, Greater Magic Weapon. It lasts for one hour of real time per level, so pretty much permanent. And it is the best way of increasing your weapon enhancement value, which directly increases both your damage and also attack by plus one for each point. The increase will be of one enhancement per four caster levels you have for a maximum of plus five. This actually works different than in tabletop if you're used to that. The Pathfinder games version is way more powerful because it actually lets your value be applied on top of what you already have on the weapon. For example, the classic Grave Singer by default is a plus two weapon. Let's now apply Greater Magic Weapon from Scylla on it. Scylla only has 17 caster level as a paladin, which means normally she would only get a weapon up to plus four, so 16, right? However, because this bonus will be applied on top of what the weapon already has, which is plus two, it will become plus five. Let's see how it goes. And there we go. So notice that while it says temporary enhancement plus 4, it has now become a plus 5 enhancement weapon. Thus the plus 5 to both attack rolls and also damage. The reason is like I said before, this extra plus 4 was applied on top of what we already have, plus 2. Just remember that the cap will always be plus 5 through this spell, but that's more than enough. Greater magic weapon is both a divine and arcane spell. For divine casters it comes at level 4, as for arcane, level 3. Essentially, because of the stacking nature it has, it lets you not only turn pretty much any weapon in shop plus 5, but also do it way earlier than you would otherwise. For example, if my character only had 8 caster level for a plus 2, but I already had a plus 2 weapon, it would then become plus 4 quite early in the game too. Suffice to say, it's a must have, and you definitely want this on any weapon you have that's not already plus 5. Now the second most powerful weapon buff is the level 4 divine spell called Crusader's Edge. It lasts 1 minute per level, which isn't the best, but also not the worst, and you can easily turn it into 24 hours, or extend the duration for double anyways. It only works on melee weapons, ranged weapons cannot be enchanted by this, but it can also work for natural attacks, even on armed hits like Monk Fists. So it is amazing to cast on pets as well, but it can only enhance their primary attack, for pets that only have one attack type anyways, like the dog and the wolf, the boar and so on, it's great because most of their attacks, including attacks of opportunity, will be enhanced by this. Anyways, let's get into what this buff actually does. It adds the Evil Outsider Bane property to your weapon. Evil Outsiders are pretty much the most common enemies in the game. All demons are Evil Outsiders. The Bane property means not only an extra plus two enhancement value to the weapon and get this, it will stack with whatever enhancement your weapon already has, including going over the plus 5 cap. So it's amazing to combine with greater magic weapon. This way you can have a plus 5 weapon that will then become plus 7 from the extra plus 2 Crusader's Edge gives you against demons. Second, it also adds 2d6 irresistible damage against these enemies, which applies per hit, so quite powerful. Honestly, Crusader's Edge is so powerful that you want it on every single melee character you have, including pets. Only ranged characters can benefit from it, sadly. Poor Aru. Now, sadly, there aren't many spells that actually buff your weapons. It's mostly abilities after this. But the Holy Sword unique Paladin spell can be quite useful. It can be applied on any party member. It's a level 4 divine spell. 
and essentially makes your weapon into a plus 5 holy weapon, but what you really want from it is the holy property. Holy is one of the best enchantments for any weapon in the game because it adds extra damage against evil creatures, pretty much 99% of the enemies you fight. For an extra 2d6 irresistible damage which does stack with pain, for example, from Crusader's Edge. Sadly, as a level 4 Paladin only spell, we won't have many slots to use it, but unlike Crusader's Edge, it can work on ranged attacks too, despite the fact the spell is called Holy Sword. It works for basically any weapon, even unarmed too. For example, if you cast it on Aru here, her normal bow went from plus 1 to plus 5 and is now holy. For our truly last spell buff, we have Resounding Blow. This is kinda unique in that, while it is a level 5 divine spell, clerics and oracles don't have access to this, it's only inquisitors. It pretty much adds an extra 1d6 points of sonic damage per hit to your weapon, but has somewhat short duration at 1 round per level only. Still, considering the other level 5 inquisitor spells aren't that useful, you might as well stick with resounding blow for extra damage. Now let us get into highly powerful abilities that can enhance your weapons even further. I want to first start with Cleric Domains. Domains are, as always, very powerful abilities to have and are extremely versatile too. Assuming you have Sociel, who is a story party member, the main Cleric of the game, he actually has one domain that is amazing for buffing the good domain. At level 8, you'll get the Holy Lance ability, which can add, just like the Paladin Holy Sword weapon, the holy property to any weapon of choice, for a number of rounds equal to half your cleric's class levels, so around one minute at max level. It's rather decent as far as duration. Sure, you won't have it for every battle, but for the ones that really matter, the tough encounters, you can definitely use Social to buff your allies with this. Now, for another very useful domain power, we have an ability that's quite similar to Holy Lands, Staff of Order. This one comes from the Law domain. For characters like Social, remember you can always use Impossible Domain to get as many domains you want, regardless of restrictions. Anyways, Staff of Order will add the Axiomatic property to your weapon. Axiomatic is similar to Holy in that it's also an extra 2d6 damage, except in this case against chaotic creatures. Since most of the tough enemies in the game are demons or cultists, well, they're all chaotic. Even the non-evil enemies that you fight, let's say in the first DLC, Inevitable Excess, they are also chaotic, so this will work against them. And it has the same uses and limitations of Holy Lands. Once again, despite being called Staff, it works for any weapon. So now we already have Holy, Axiomatic and Evil Outsider Bane. Each one of these grants an extra 2d6 damage, irresistible by the way, so we have 6d6 extra damage against demons. Now let's cover some class abilities that can further enhance your weapons. There are a lot of classes in the game, each with their own unique abilities for extra weapon damage, but mostly it's going to be Magus, and I have already released an updated Magus guide you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below, but anyways. Magus can add a lot of stuff to their weapons, also quite long-lasting too, at 1 minute per class level to the Enduring Blade ability, so it will never run out. Ideally, what you first want are the triple elemental enchantments, so Flaming, Frost, and Shock. This grants us 1d6 elemental damage of each of these types. The Devoted Blade Magus ability also lets you enhance your weapon with further properties. Anarchic, Axiomatic, Holy, and Unholy. This will depend on your alignment, for example, a good aligned Magus can add Holy, a lawful one, axiomatic, meanwhile, let's say a chaotic evil Magus can add anarchic and unholy. Ideally, this makes the best Magus alignment lawful good, because you can then combine axiomatic and holy. Unholy and anarchic kinda don't matter in this game, because, well, we pretty much don't fight any, let's say, lawful good enemies, only chaotic evil ones. Besides Magus, the second best class for enchanting our weapons is the Spirit Hunter archetype from Shaman, so the same as the Camellia party member. Their Spirit Enchantment ability works pretty much in the same way as the Magus weapon enhancements. At level 1, you can add the unique Ghost Touch property, which means you deal full damage against incorporeal creatures like ghosts. Then starting from level 5, Flaming, Frost, Keen, Shock or Speed. Speed is not really that useful because you can just cast the Haste spell and it doesn't really stack for extra attacks. Extra elemental damage is always good to have, and as far as skin, this can be quite good too, 
as it works the same way as the improved critical feat. You double your critical range, except in the case of Shaman and Magus, they can achieve this way earlier than they would be allowed to get the improved critical feat. For them, it's only at level 11. This meanwhile comes at level 5, so way, way earlier than 11, that's for sure. Now, outside of generic spells and class abilities, I also want to cover the unique ways each mythic path has of enhancing their weapons. Usually you get both mythic spells and mythic abilities for that, starting with Angel. Angel already comes with the Sword of Heaven ability that adds Holy to your weapon. Just remember that Holy won't stack with itself, so for example, the Sword of Heaven Holy and Holy Sword from Paladin, well, only one is going to apply. By default, Sword of Heaven lasts very little, only one minute, which is why I highly recommend you pick the Everlasting Flame mythic ability so that it lasts one minute per mythic rank, up to 10 times as long. The Ultimate Angel buff Army of Heaven, which is a level 10 spell, can also provide the Holy Sword benefit to all of your allies at the same time except for one hour of real time, it really is that amazing. There is a reason why I say this is the ultimate angel buff, it actually does a lot more, but as far as weapon damage, that's basically it. For the last powerful angel way of increasing weapon damage, we have, well, mostly an indirect way, through the abolish abilities. Ideally, you want to go for abolish guy, as as far as I'm aware, most demons are of this type, at least when compared with other ones. This lets whatever damage you have, no matter the source, get a huge 50% boost against the enemy of the corresponding type. Now let's get into the Lich Mythic Path and its unique ways of increasing your weapon damage. Lich is actually quite versatile and has many ways of doing it. They make the perfect fighter mages, it's not just about spellcasting. Anyways, first we have the highly powerful Vampiric Blade spell. It lets your weapons do 1d6 plus your caster level. On every single hit, it really is that OP. Even for my Magus, which isn't a Merged Lich, so it has lower caster level, we are still getting 18 plus 1d6 of irresistible damage per weapon attack. Last but not least, as the name itself implies, it even heals you for the same amount of damage you deal, so you never run out of hit points. This comes at level 4 too, so it's great for any Lich. Because even if you are a no merged Lich, at Mythic 4 you would already have it, which is pretty early. Lastly, and this one is a Lich power, you only get 3 during Mythic progression, we have Weapon of Death. It adds both Bane Living and also the Nullifying ability to your weapon. Nullifying is a bit niche, it reduces the enemy's spell resistance when you hit them, but overall it doesn't make much of a difference. Living Bane, on the other hand, can be useful because it's basically Bane for all living targets, and demons are living targets. So the extra 2d6 damage and plus 2 to weapon enhancement. The only issue is, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Bane stacks. So we have the normal Bane from Magus, Evil Outsider Bane from Crusader's Edge, and Living Bane from the Lich Weapon of Death power. I think only one of them is going to really apply. Now let us cover the Azata unique ways of enhancing your weapon abilities. I'm afraid as far as direct ways you really only have one, the level 6 mythic spell called Songs of Steel. You can buff any ally with it and it makes their first attack only during a round deal an additional 2d6 plus your Azata caster level sonic damage. Sonic is rather good because pretty much no enemy can resist it usually, so you would be dealing 2d6 plus 18 or 20 at max mythic rank of extra damage for your first attack. It also has some other neat bonuses, but as far as, you know, weapon damage, that's it. While it may not seem like much, Azata also has indirect ways of increasing your damage, such as the highly powerful Believing Yourself buff, which adds a huge morale bonus, extremely rare, to any ability score of your choice, which means a plus 5 to our strength that will stack with a lot of other stuff. That's why even our Kitsune Azata has 64 strength. Speaking about boosting our abilities, Azatas can even refresh the Mutagen ability from, let's say, Mutation Warrior or Alchemist, all thanks to the second breath level 5 mythic spell, which restores the abilities of all your companions, including your own character. Shaman and Magus weapon enhancement uses, domain power uses as well, like Holy Lands and Staff of Order, and the Mutagen, as I said before. The Heroes Never Surrender level 7 mythic spell also does the same, except it even restores spell slots up to level 7 too for everyone. 
outside of the Azata's own mythic spellbook, probably so you can just loop this forever. And speaking about Azata, their unique first ascension ability, Instrument of Freedom, can also empower your party's attacks with holy damage. While the duration isn't really that high, you do get quite a lot of uses of this per day. Now, theoretically, you don't really need to be an Azata to get this. Any mythic path can choose any first ascension ability, but this is the Azata thematic one anyways. When it comes to the Trickster Mythic Path, I'm afraid they don't really have any direct spells or abilities that enchant your weapons further, but they definitely possess indirect ways of doing so and quite OP ones for that. First, they get access to the special Trickster Improved Critical Feats, which lets you stack your weapon's critical chance to the max. We have 11 to 20 here, even more when you consider the Knowledge World 2 trick that makes all your 1 rolls become d20, so automatic criticals, for around 50% critical chance, it doesn't get any better than that. Lastly, through the lore religion rank 2 and 3 improved and greater mythic tricks, you can actually choose any domain for your character, as if you were a full level cleric. So the abilities you mentioned before, like Staff of Order and Holy Lands, well, you'll be able to use them just fine. When it comes to the Aeon mythic path, you have Quite some interesting unique abilities. First, you have the Aeon Bane power gain for free at Mythic 4. For a number of rounds per day, you go to twice your Mythic rank. You can make any weapon your Aeon is wielding count as if having the highly powerful Bane property. Bane, as I said before, is great because this is a generic Bane that works against any enemy type. The last property it adds you is one of the most overpowered in the game as well, as it lets your weapon dispel effects from the target per the dispel magic spell per every single hit, so every weapon hit you deal to the enemy, you'll get to attempt to dispel one buff affecting them, at pretty high chances too. This becomes even better at Mythic 6 for Improved Aeon's Bane, which further enhances the Bane damage for a total of 4d6, considering the normal Bane is already 2d6. And here is the best part. Now, every single hit you do will attempt to dispel every single buff affecting the enemy. It really is that OP. Considering how many attacks per round you can have, there is nothing that can withstand against your Aeon's attacks. They'll always get dispelled, and a dispelled enemy, even a boss on Unfair, is a dead boss. When it comes to mythic spells, Aeon doesn't have anything that directly enhances their weapon, but you know, the ultimate Aeon spell, Perfect Form, will set all of your stats to your highest ability score. So depending on what build you have, this can result in a lot extra damage. Lastly, we have the Demon Mythic Path. Demons have two very powerful spells that can increase their weapon damage. First, the level 2 mythic spell, Flames of the Abyss. The next two attacks, plus one additional attack per five caster levels above seven, will deal an additional 1d6 unholy damage per two caster levels. Unholy is great because it's pretty much irresistible too, even if you're using it against evil enemies, they'll still take the damage. While it won't work on many attacks, the extra damage, I mean 1d6 per two caster levels, so around 10 at max rank, is quite powerful. Their last unique buff is Life Bane, a level 5 spell. It makes the target's weapon, so this can be cast on allies too. Ninja plus 5, Living Bane weapon. Living Bane, as I've mentioned before, for the Lich power, is 2d6 extra damage against all living creatures, including demons. Last but not least, let us cover the unique ways items can enhance your weapons. The first, and honestly the most powerful one of them all, is the Storyteller Relic called the Covenant of the Inheritor. This can be equipped on your quick slots, and you emit a holy aura surrounding your character, which means it can hit your whole party and you can pretty much equip this on anyone besides, you know, ranged characters that stay far at the back. Still, a 30-foot area is pretty big. The most important benefit is that it will apply both the good and cold iron property to all allies under this aura, no matter their weapon type, melee, range, and natural attacks, pet hits, and so on. If you're wondering why this is so good, well, pretty much all of the demonic enemies you fight in the game have physical resistance against damage that is only bypassed by exactly these two properties, good align and cold iron. So by just having this relic, and you can get this super early, as early as the beginning of chapter 2, you'll easily be able to overcome 
the physical damage negation of demons just fine. Before, it used to be pretty annoying because you would have to keep turning this on and off whenever you entered a new loading screen or area, but nowadays it's pretty much permanent, so perfect. Second, we have the Dragon Familiar Jarsigax. Jarsigax comes pretty late in the game, sadly, only at Chapter 5, if you do the Dragon Burial Ground quest, and he will randomly add 1d4 Cold Fire Acid or Electricity Damage on weapon hits whenever you attack, so also per hit. For our last highly OP weapon enhancer item, we have the Bane of Spirit Ring, probably the strongest rings of them all in the game, truly the one ring. It is a Crusade Relic, I also have guides for how to get the best ones you can check here, and essentially, as a free action, you can turn the damage off any party member, they don't have to be equipped with this ring, because you can use the ability on anyone, into irresistible force type. When I say all damage, it really converts every single damage source you have, no matter where it is coming from. Weapon damage, spell damage, damage boosts from class abilities and such, it will all be converted. So it is especially useful for classes like Magus or the Spirit Hunter Shaman, because they can then get full damage for their elemental weapon enchantments, flaming, frost and shock, regardless of enemy resistances. This item is also especially useful for hitting swarms for full damage, as some of the swarm enemies are immune to physical damage, not with this, however, they'll take all the damage you can inflict. Well, alright, so this was it for my How to Enchant Your Weapons to the Max guide. If you think I missed something that you find quite useful, please be sure to comment it down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, if you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.